My grandpa Biden died very young. He was died in the hospital I was born in six days before I was there. Pittsburgh is a city of bridges, more bridges in Pittsburgh than any other city in America. I watched that bridge collapse. He said, you travel on hundred, average 117 days a year, round trip, 300 miles a day, 36 years, that's 1,285,000 miles. It's a lot of travel. President Biden there accused once again of making false claims about his past, this during a speech earlier in the week in Milwaukee. Comes as more and more Democrats now say they are concerned about his age and fitness to serve a second term. So let's bring in Wall Street Journal columnist Kim Strassel. She's a Fox News contributor, also author of The Biden Malaise. Good to have you, Kim. Hi, it's so great to be here. Morning. Uh, I'm going to quote you. Back to you, to quote Harry, when Harry met Sally for a second. You write this week, Democrats are by every measure putting forward their weakest presidential nominee in decades, one who makes even the hapless Jimmy Carter a 1980 look competent. Pretty scathing. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Democrats are making this extraordinary bet, if you just think about for a second. I mean, they're essentially saying your candidate, meaning Donald Trump, uh, is, is worse than our candidate, and therefore we're going to win the election. I mean, that is making bets on a couple of things. One, that Donald Trump is actually the nominee. Right now he's a front runner, but it's uncertain that di the dynamic might not change. Um, but two, that uh, Americans are just going to look past the problems of the Biden White House. And there are so many, if you look at this president in isolation, there's the age question, there's the economy question, there, there's Hunter Biden and the baggage of that. Um, this is a guy who's got a lot of political problems in his own right, and yet the party seems unwilling to make a change. There was one Democrat who is. Dean Phillips, he's a Democrat from the western suburbs of Minneapolis. He said, why Democrat Dean Phillips says Biden shouldn't run? I just felt compelled to raise my voice in the face of what I consider to be an unwillingness to confront the truth right now. Uh, God forbid the president has a health episode or something happens in the middle of a primary. To your point, he is deep in the minority. He is. I mean, I thought that was remarkable. He said uh, an unwillingness to confront the truth. Obviously, I mean, we as a nation are looking at this unwillingness of a party and the most of the media to confront the fact that this is going to be the oldest president who'd ever run for re-election. There are clear mental decline issues. It, it's now an open topic of conversation. Um, with a, a, a not great economy for many people, we just heard a reporter talking about inflation and gas prices. And and here's the thing, the Democrats Democrats have some other people who could certainly step up and win a, a primary against him or, or step up if he were to say he's not running again. But nobody wants to do that. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's really a bipartisan talking point now in Washington, as we all well know. You know, the guy on the other side of the aisle is not far behind the president, the Republican frontrunner, uh, former President Trump. Kim, take a look at this. This is what voters, uh, voter feedback about the top reasons why they say they disapprove of the president president right now. Number one is his handling of the economy. Number two, his policies. Number three, his age, mental state. Uh, number four, his dishonesty and corruption. And then the last item there on the laundry list is his border and immigration policies. What do you make of that list? Yeah, I mean, there's another uh, poll that came out earlier this summer in which seven in 10 Americans who were asked said that they thought Joe Biden was too old to be president and, uh, and that he was not really shouldn't be in the job anymore. And as you note, look, I think the whole country is looking at this election and the prospect of a Biden Trump repeat. Trump is not far behind him in age either. Um, and by the way, also a, a man who, if he were reelected, would be term limited to just another four years, given the Constitution. Um, so I think there's an eagerness out there, as expressed by Representative Phillips, for some new faces, some fresh blood. Um, and I guess it's going to happen. We're going to have to see how the dynamics of this okay. play out. On the one side, you have a, a GOP primary uh, in which people are dividing the vote. And on the other side, you have a, an incumbent who won't get out of the way. Um, Kim, we got some breaking news, too. Uh, just in the last 20 minutes or so, we got a ruling in the E. Jean Carroll civil trial. Now, just so folks remember, she was the woman who accused him of groping and raping her in a department store here in New York. The civil trial is on the calendar for the 15th of January. That's a Monday. Um, Trump's teams tried to get it postponed, and the judge denied that request just minutes ago. They called the claims frivolous. On the 15th of January is also the date of the Iowa caucus. 
<laughs> so here we go with a pack calendar. Just a quick thought on that. Yeah, I mean, and this is going to, you're going to see this in the other cases that are being brought against him as well, too. His team is working very hard to get those delayed. But you're going to have some judges like this one who just say no. And I don't see any way Donald Trump avoids a number of court appearances at the height of the primary and caucus process. All right, Kimber, thank you so much. Check the piece out in the Wall Street Journal. Kimberly Strauss, so there she is. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Thanks, guys. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.